The Old Testament is the first section of the two-part Christian biblical canon, the second section is the New Testament. The Old Testament includes the books of the Hebrew Bible Tanakh or Protocanon, and in various Christian denominations also includes deuterocanonical books. Orthodox Christians, Catholics and Protestants use different canons, which differ with respect to the texts that are included in the Old Testament. Martin Luther, holding to Jewish and other ancient precedent, excluded the deuterocanonical books from the Old Testament of his translation of the Bible, placing them in a section he labeled apocrypha, hidden. To counter Luther's heresy, the fourth session of the Catholic Council of Trent in 1546 confirmed that the deuterocanonical books were equally authoritative as the protocanonical in the Canon of Trent in the year Luther died. Following Jerome, S. Veritas Hebraica truth of the Hebrew principle, the Protestant Old Testament consists of the same books as the Hebrew Bible, but the order and division of the books are different. Protestants number the Old Testament books at 39, while the Hebrew Bible numbers the same books as 24. The Hebrew Bible counts Samuel, Kings, and Chronicles as one book each, and the twelve minor prophets are one book, and also Ezra and Nehemiah form a single book. The differences between the Hebrew Bible and other versions of the Old Testament such as the Samaritan Pentateuch, the Syriac Peshitta, the Latin Vulgate, the Greek Septuagint, the Ethiopian Bible and other canons, are more substantial. Many of these canons include books and sections of books that the others do not. For a more comprehensive discussion of these differences, see Books of the Bible. Topic. Hebrew Bible Canon Topic. The Hebrew Bible or Tanakh consists of 24 books of the Masoretic text recognized by Rabbinic Judaism. There is no scholarly consensus as to when the Hebrew Bible canon was fixed, with some scholars arguing that it was fixed by the Hasmonean dynasty 140 BCE, while others arguing that it was not fixed until the 2nd century CE or even later. According to Mark Zvi Brettler, the Jewish scriptures outside the Torah and the prophets were fluid, with different groups seeing authority in different books. Michael Barber says that the earliest and most explicit evidence of a Hebrew canonical list comes from Jewish historian Josephus, 37 CE, c. 100 CE, who wrote about a canon used by Jews in the first century AD. In Against Apian Book 1, Paragraph 8, Josephus in 95 CE divided sacred scriptures into three parts, five books of the Torah, thirteen books of the prophets, and four books of hymns. For we have not an innumerable multitude of books among us, disagreeing from and contradicting one another, as the Greeks have, but only twenty-two books, which contain the records of all the past times, which are justly believed to be divine, and of them five belong to Moses, which contain his laws and the traditions of the origin of mankind till his death. This interval of time was little short of 3,000 years, but as to the time from the death of Moses till the reign of Artaxerxes king of Persia, who reigned after Xerxes, the prophets, who were after Moses, wrote down what was done in their times in thirteen books. The remaining four books contain hymns to God, and precepts for the conduct of human life. It is true, our history hath been written since Artaxerxes very particularly, but hath not been esteemed of the like authority with the former by our forefathers, because there hath not been an exact succession of prophets since that time, and how firmly we have given credit to these books of our own nation is evident by what we do, for during so many ages as have already passed, no one has been so bold as either to add anything to them, to take anything from them, or to make any change in them, but it has become natural to all Jews immediately, and from their very birth, to esteem these books to contain divine doctrines, and to persist in them, and, if occasion be willingly to die for them. Josephus mentions Ezra and Nehemiah in Antiquities of the Jews book 11, chapter 5 and Esther during the rule of Artaxerxes in chapter 6. The canon is until the reign of Artaxerxes as mentioned by Josephus in Against Apian book 1, paragraph 8. For a long time, following this date, the divine inspiration of Esther, the Song of Songs, and Ecclesiastes was often under scrutiny. According to Gerald A. LaRue, Josephus' listing represents what came to be the Jewish canon, although scholars were still wrestling with problems of the authority of certain writings at the time that he was writing. Barber says that Josephus' 22 books were not universally accepted, since other Jewish communities used more than 22 books. In 1871, Heinrich Gretz concluded that there had been a Council of Jamnia or Yavna in Hebrew, which had decided Jewish canon sometime in the late 1st century, c. 70 to 90. 
This became the prevailing scholarly consensus for much of the 20th century. However, the theory of the Council of Jamnia is largely discredited today. The protocanonical and deuterocanonical books The Roman Catholic and Eastern Church's canons include books, called the deuterocanonical books, whose authority was disputed by Rabbi Akiva during the first century development of the Hebrew canon, though Akiva was not opposed to a private reading of them, as he himself frequently uses sarash. One early record of the deuterocanonical books is found in the early Koine Greek Septuagint translation of the Jewish scriptures. This translation was widely used by the early Christians and is the one most often quoted 300 of 350 quotations including many of Jesus' own words in the New Testament when it quotes the Old Testament. Other, older versions of the texts in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, have since been discovered among the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Cairo Geniza. The traditional explanation of the development of the Old Testament canon describes two sets of Old Testament books, the protocanonical and the deuterocanonical books. According to this, some church fathers accepted the inclusion of the deuterocanonical books based on their inclusion in the Septuagint most notably Augustine, while others disputed their status based on their exclusion from the Hebrew Bible most notably Jerome. Michael Barber argues that this time-honored reconstruction is grossly inaccurate and that the case against the Apocrypha is overstated. Augustine simply wanted a new version of the Latin Bible based on the Greek text since the Septuagint was widely used throughout the churches and translation process could not rely on a single person Jerome, who could be fallible. He in fact held that the Hebrew and the Septuagint were both equally inspired, as stated in his City of God 18.44. For most early Christians, the Hebrew Bible was holy scripture, but was to be understood and interpreted in the light of Christian convictions. While deuterocanonical books were referenced by some fathers as scripture, men such as Athanasius held that they were for reading only and not to be used for determination of doctrine. Athanasius includes the Book of Baruch and the Letter of Jeremiah in the list of the canon of the Old Testament, and excludes the Book of Esther. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, the inferior rank to which the Deuteros were relegated by authorities like Origen, Athanasius, and Jerome, was due to too rigid a conception of canonicity, one demanding that a book, to be entitled to this supreme dignity, must be received by all, must have the sanction of Jewish antiquity, and must moreover be adapted not only to edification, but also to the confirmation of the doctrine of the Church, to borrow Jerome's phrase. Following Martin Luther, Protestants regard the deuterocanonical books as apocryphal non -canonical. According to J. N. D. Kelly, "...it should be observed that the Old Testament thus admitted as authoritative in the Church, always included, though with varying degrees of recognition, the so-called apocrypha or deuterocanonical books." <laughs> Septuagint the early Christian Church used the Greek texts since Greek was a lingua franca of the Roman Empire at the time, and the language of the Greco-Roman Church Aramaic was the language of Syriac Christianity. The Septuagint seems to have been a major source for the Apostles, but it is not the only one. Saint Jerome offered, for example, Matt 2:15 and 2:23, John chapter 19 verse 37, John chapter 7 verses 38, 1 Cor 2:9, as examples not found in the Septuagint, but in Hebrew texts. Matt 2:23 is not present in current Masoretic tradition either, though according to Saint Jerome, it was in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1. The New Testament writers, when citing the Jewish scriptures or when quoting Jesus doing so, freely used the Greek translation, implying that Jesus, his apostles. Apostles and their followers considered it reliable. In the early Christian Church, the presumption that the Septuagint LXX was translated by Jews before the era of Christ, and that the Septuagint at certain places gives itself more to a Christological interpretation than 2nd century Hebrew texts, was taken as evidence that Jews had changed the Hebrew text in a way that made them less Christological. For example, Irenaeus concerning Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, the Septuagint clearly writes of a virgin Greek Parthenos that shall conceive. While the Hebrew text was, according to Irenaeus, at that time interpreted by Theodotion and Aquila both proselytes of the Jewish faith as a young woman that shall conceive. According to Irenaeus, the Ebionites used this to claim that Joseph was the biological father of Jesus. 
From Irenaeus' point of view that was pure heresy, facilitated by late anti-Christian alterations of the scripture in Hebrew, as evident by the older, pre-Christian, Septuagint. When Jerome undertook the revision of the Old Latin translations of the Septuagint, he checked the Septuagint against the Hebrew texts that were then available. He broke with church tradition and translated most of the Old Testament of his Vulgate from Hebrew rather than Greek. His choice was severely criticized by Augustine, his contemporary. A flood of still less moderate criticism came from those who regarded Jerome as a forger. While on the one hand he argued for the superiority of the Hebrew texts in correcting the Septuagint on both philological and theological grounds, on the other, in the context of accusations of heresy against him, Jerome would acknowledge the Septuagint texts as well. The Eastern Orthodox Church still prefers to use the LXX as the basis for translating the Old Testament into other languages. The Eastern Orthodox also use LXX Septuagint untranslated where Greek is the liturgical language, e.g. in the Orthodox Church of Constantinople, the Church of Greece and the Cypriot Orthodox Church. Critical translations of the Old Testament, while using the Masoretic text as their basis, consult the Septuagint as well as other versions in an attempt to reconstruct the meaning of the Hebrew text whenever the latter is unclear, undeniably corrupt, or ambiguous. Bryanio's list Perhaps the earliest reference to a Christian canon is the Bryanio's list which was found by Philotheos Bryanios in the Codex Hierosolimitanus in the library of the Monastery of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in 1873. The list is written in Koine Greek letters, transcribing Aramaic and or Hebrew names, each with a corresponding book title from the Greek Septuagint, and is dated to the 1st or early 2nd century by Jean-Paul Odette in 1950. Some scholars believe it should be assigned a later date. Odette lists 27 books. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Jesus Nave, Deuteronomy, Numbers, Judges, Ruth, Four of Kings, Samuel and Kings, Two of Chronicles, Two of Esdras, Esther, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Job, Minor Prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. Jesus Nave was an old name for the book of Joshua, the Two of Esdras are linked in the list to Esdras A and Esdras B from the surviving Pandect witnesses to Septuagint, but otherwise Odette proposed that the further book of Esdras in the list might have denoted an Aramaic Targum. According to Albert Sundberg, the uncommon 27 number of books is unknown in Jewish lists, and R.T. Beckwith asserts that the Bryanios list mixes the prophets and hagiographa indiscriminately together, it must be of Christian rather than Jewish authorship, and since the use of Aramaic continued in the Palestinian church for centuries, there is no reason to date it so early 1st or 2nd century CE. <laughs> Marcion Marcion of Sinop was the first Christian leader in recorded history though later, considered heretical to propose and delineate a uniquely Christian canon. He explicitly rejects the Old Testament and pushes his version of the New Testament to be the Christian canon. Irenaeus wrote, Marcion besides abolishing the prophets and the law mutilates the gospel that is according to Luke. He likewise persuaded his disciples that he himself was more worthy of credit than are those apostles who have handed down the gospel to us, furnishing his followers not with the gospel but merely a fragment of it. In like manner, too, he dismembered the letters of Paul, Haer, 1.27.2 with different perspective, Tertullian said, since Marcion separated the New Testament from the Old, he is necessarily subsequent to that which he separated, inasmuch as it was only in his power to separate what was previously united. Having been united previous to its separation, the fact of its subsequent separation proves the subsequence also of the man who effected the separation. De Prescription Hereticorum 30 Everett Ferguson, in Chapter 18 of the Canon Debate, makes a note that Wolfram Kinzig suggests that it was Marcion who usually called his Bible Testamentum Latin for Testament. In the same chapter, Ferguson also says that Tertullian criticizes Marcion regarding the naming of the books in his list. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, the Marcionites were perhaps the most dangerous foe Christianity has ever known. Other scholars propose that it was Melito of Sardis who originally coined the phrase Old Testament, which is associated with supersessionism. Topic: <laughs> Eusebius on Melito and Origen. 
Topic. The first list of Old Testament books compiled by a Christian source is recorded by the 4th century historian Eusebius. Eusebius describes the collection of a 2nd century bishop, Melito of Sardis. Melito S list dated to circa 170, the result of a trip to the Holy Land, probably the famous library at Caesarea Maritima, to determine both the order and number of books in the Hebrew Bible, instead seems to follow the order of the books presented in the Septuagint. Melito's list, as cited by Eusebius, as follows: of Moses, five books: Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Jesus Nave, Judges, Ruth, of Kings, four books; of Chronicles, two; the Psalms of David, the Proverbs of Solomon, Wisdom also, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Job, of Prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, of the twelve prophets, one book; Daniel, Ezekiel, Esdras, according to Archibald Alexander, Wisdom. In Melito's list is thought by many to be referring to the Book of Wisdom, which is part of the Deuterocanon, but which others dispute. Book of Esther does not appear in the list. Eusebius also records 22 canonical books of the Hebrews given by Origen of Alexandria. That which is called by us Genesis, but by the Hebrews, from the beginning of the book, Bresseth, which means, in the beginning, Exodus, Wellesmith, that is, these are the names, Leviticus, Wykra, and he called, Numbers, Amosphakodim, Deuteronomy, Elidiberim, these are the words, Jesus, the son of Nave, Josue ben Noun, Judges and Ruth, among them in one book, Saphatim, the first and second of kings, among them one, Samuel, that is, the called of God, the third and fourth of kings in one, Wamelch David, that is, the kingdom of David, of the chronicle the first and second in one, Debriamine, that is, records of days, Esdras, first and second in one, Ezra, that is, an assistant, the book of Psalms, Sfarthalim, the Proverbs of Solomon, Meleth, Ecclesiastes, Cold, the Song of Songs, not, as some suppose, Songs of Songs, Sir Hasserim, Isaiah, Jesiah, Jeremiah, with Lamentations and the Epistle in one, Yeremia, Daniel, Daniel, Ezekiel, Jezekiel, Job, Job, Esther, Esther. And besides these there are the Maccabees, which are entitled Sarbath Sabaniel. Origen's list excludes the twelve minor prophets, apparently by accident, but includes the epistle of Jeremiah perhaps referring Baruch as an appendix to Jeremiah and the Maccabees, which disputation exists whether the Hebrews of his day regarded the Maccabees as canonical or not. For Origen himself quotes Maccabees and the rest of the related apocryphal books continuously throughout his writings as scripture and testifies that the churches use books which the Hebrews do not. Topic. Constantine the Great Topic. In 331, Constantine I commissioned Eusebius to deliver 50 Bibles for the Church of Constantinople. Athanasius Apol. Const. 4 recorded Alexandrian scribes around 340 preparing Bibles for Constance. Little else is known, though there is plenty of speculation. For example, it is speculated that this may have provided motivation for canon lists, and that Codex Vaticanus and Codex Sinaiticus may be examples of these Bibles. Those codices contain almost a full version of the Septuagint. Vaticanus is only lacking 1 to 3 Maccabees, and Sinaiticus is lacking 2 to 3 Maccabees, 1 Esdras, Baruch, and Letter of Jeremiah, together with the Peshitta and Codex Alexandrinus. Codex Vaticanus and Sinaiticus are the earliest extant Christian Bibles. There is no evidence among the canons of the First Council of Nicaea of any determination on the canon, however, Jerome 347 in his prologue to Judith, makes the claim that the Book of Judith was found by the Nicene Council to have been counted among the number of the sacred scriptures. Topic Jerome and the Vulgate Topic Pope Damasus the First's Council of Rome in 382, if the Decretum Gelasianum is correctly associated with it, issued a biblical canon identical with the list given at Trent, or if not the list is at least a 6th century compilation claiming a 4th century imprimatur. He was encouraged his personal secretary, Jerome, in the Vulgate translation of the Bible. Damasus's commissioning of the Latin Vulgate edition of the Bible was instrumental in the fixation of the canon in the West. This list, given below, was purportedly endorsed by Pope Damasus I, only shown the Old Testament part. 
The order of the Old Testament begins here, Genesis, one book, Exodus, one book, Leviticus, one book, Numbers, one book, Deuteronomy, one book, Joshua Nave, one book, Judges, one book, Ruth, one book, Kings, four books Samuel I and two, Kings one and two, Paralipomenon Chronicles, two books, Psalms, one book, Solomon, three books, Proverbs, one book, Ecclesiastes, one book, Canticle of Canticles, one book, Likewise Wisdom, one book, Ecclesiasticus, one book. Likewise the order of the prophets, sixteen books of the prophets listed. Likewise the order of the histories, Job, one book, Tobit, one book, Esdras, two books, Esther, one book, Judith, one book, Maccabees, two books. The two books of Esdras refer to the books of one Esdras and Ezra Nehemiah, one Esdras is entitled Third Esdras and Ezra Nehemiah is entitled First Esdras and Second Esdras in the Old Latin Bible, in the Septuagint version one Esdras is Esdras A and Ezra Nehemiah is Esdras B. In the prologue to Ezra Jerome states that 3rd Esdras is apocryphal. In the same way in his preface of the books of Samuel and Kings, explains the following, to the third class belong the hagiographa, of which the first book begins with Job, the eighth, Ezra, which itself is likewise divided amongst Greeks and Latins into two books, the ninth is Esther. In his Vulgate's prologues, Jerome argued for veritas hebraica, meaning the truth of the Hebrew text over the Septuagint and Old Latin translations. Vulgate Old Testament included books outside of the Hebrew Bible, translated from the Greek and Aramaic, or derived from the Old Latin. His preface to the books of Samuel and Kings includes the following statement, commonly called the Helmeted Preface. This preface to the Scriptures may serve as a Helmeted introduction to all the books which we turn from Hebrew into Latin, so that we may be assured that what is not found in our list must be placed amongst the apocryphal writings. Wisdom, therefore, which generally bears the name of Solomon, and the book of Jesus, the son of Sirach, and Judith, and Tobias, and the shepherd are not in the canon. The first book of Maccabees I have found to be Hebrew, the second is Greek, as can be proved from the very style, at the request of two bishops, however, he made translations of Tobit and Judith from Hebrew texts, which he made clear in his prologues he considered apocryphal. But in his prologue to Judith, without using the word canon, he mentioned that Judith was held to be scriptural by the First Council of Nicaea. In his reply to Rufinus, he affirmed that he was consistent with the choice of the Church regarding which version of the deuterocanonical portions of Daniel to use, which the Jews of his day did not include, What sin have I committed in following the judgment of the churches? But when I repeat what the Jews say against the story of Susanna and the hymn of the three children, and the fables of Bel and the dragon, which are not contained in the Hebrew Bible, the man who makes this a charge against me proves himself to be a fool and a slanderer, for I explained not what I thought but what they commonly say against us, against Rufinus. 2, 33 AD 402, Michael Barber asserts that, although Jerome was once suspicious of the Apocrypha, he later viewed them as scripture. Barber argues that this is clear from Jerome's epistles. As an example, he cites Jerome's letter to Eustochium, in which Jerome quotes Sirach 13-2, elsewhere Jerome also refers to Baruch, the story of Susanna and wisdom as scripture. Topic Augustine and the North African Council Topic The Synod of Hippo in 393, followed by the Council of Carthage 397 and the Council of Carthage 419, may be the first council that explicitly accepted the first canon which includes the books that did not appear in the Hebrew Bible. The councils were under significant influence of Augustine of Hippo, who regarded the canon as already closed. Canon XXXVI from the Synod of Hippo 393 records the scriptures which is considered canonical. The Old Testament books as follows, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua the son of Nun, the Judges, Ruth, the Kings, I.V. Books, the Chronicles, E. Books, Job, the Psalter, the Five Books of Solomon, the Twelve Books of the Prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezechiel, Daniel, Tobit, Judith, Esther, Ezra, E. Books, Maccabees, E. Books. On 28 August 397, the Council of Carthage confirmed the canon issued at Hippo. The recurrence of the Old Testament part as stated Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua the son of Nun, Judges, Ruth, four books of Kings, Samuel I and II, Kings I and II, two books of Paralipomena, Chronicles, Job, the Psalter, five books of Solomon, the books of the Twelve Prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezechiel, Daniel, Tobit, Judith, Esther, two books of Esdras, two 
two books of the Maccabees, the two books of Esdras referred to in the canon lists of both North African councils are now commonly recognized as corresponding to the books entitled Esdras A and Esdras B in manuscripts of the Septuagint and Vetus Latina, which in modern Schlership are known as Greek Esdras and Ezra Nehemiah, respectively. Augustine of Hippo is referring to both these texts when says, Dot and the two of Ezra, which last look more like a sequel to the continuous regular history which terminates with the books of Kings and Chronicles. The five books of Solomon refer to Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Songs, Wisdom of Solomon, and Ecclesiasticus. The four books of Kings refer to the two books of Samuel and the two books of Kings, see books of Kings composition, successively the Council of Carthage 419 in its Canon 24 listed exactly the same Old Testament canon of the previous councils, consequently the Roman Catholic canon established by the Council of Trent in 1546 differs from that of Augustine of Hippo wrote in his book on Christian Doctrine book 2 chapter 8 397 AD only in respect of the two books of Ezra. Augustine counted both Greek Esdras and Ezra Nehemiah as canonical, whereas the Council of Trent split Ezra Nehemiah into the separate books of Ezra and Nehemiah, and relegated Greek Esdras to the Apocrypha. Now the whole canon of scripture on which we say this judgment is to be exercised, is contained in the following books. Five books of Moses, that is, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, one book of Joshua the son of Nun, one of Judges, one short book called Ruth, next, four books of Kings the two books of Samuel and the two books of Kings, and two of Chronicles, Job, and Tobias, and Esther, and Judith, and the two books of Maccabees, and the two of Ezra. Dot one book of the Psalms of David, and three books of Solomon, that is to say Proverbs, Song of Songs, and Ecclesiastes. For two books, one called Wisdom and the other Ecclesiasticus. Twelve separate books of the prophets which are connected with one another, and having never been disjoined, are reckoned as one book. The names of these prophets are as follows Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Then there are the four greater prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel. The Synod of Laodicea Topic. The Synod of Laodicea was a regional synod of approximately 30 clerics from Asia Minor that assembled about 363–364 AD in Laodicea, Phrygia Picatiana. The 59th canon forbade the readings in Church of Uncanonical Books. The 60th canon listed as canonical books the 22 books of the Hebrew Bible plus the Book of Baruch and the Epistle of Jeremy. The authenticity of the 60th canon is doubtful as it is missing from various manuscripts and may have been added later to specify the extent of the preceding 59th canon. Topic: Other early authors. Topic: Athanasius 367 AD, Cyril of Jerusalem c. 350 AD and Epiphanius of Salamis c. 385 AD listed as canonical books the 22 books of the Hebrew Bible plus the book of Baruch and the epistle of Jeremy. Epiphanius of Salamis c. 385 AD in his Panarion writes that along with the Hebrew Bible books Jews had in their books the deuterocanonical epistle of Jeremiah and Baruch, both combined with Jeremiah and Lamentations in only one book, the monk Rufinus of Achilleia c. 400 AD named as canonical books the books of the Hebrew Bible and the deuterocanonical books named as ecclesiastical. Books, Pope Innocent I 405 AD, in a letter sent to the Bishop of Toulouse cited as canonical books the books of the Hebrew Bible plus the deuterocanonical books as a part of the Old Testament canon, the Decretum Gelasianum which is a work written by an anonymous scholar between 519 and 553 contains a list of books of scripture presented as having been made canonical by the Council of Rome 382 AD. This list mentions the Hebrew Bible plus the deuterocanonical books as a part of the Old Testament canon. Topic: <laughs> Quinisext Council and Canons of the Apostles. Topic: The Quinisext Council or the Council in Trullo in 691 to 692, which was rejected by Pope Sergius I and is not recognized by the 
Catholic Church see also Pentarchy, endorsed the following lists of canonical writings, the Apostolic Canons c. 385, the Synod of Laodicea c. 363, the Third Synod of Carthage c. 397, and the 39th Festal Letter of Athanasius 367. The Apostolic Canons or Ecclesiastical Canons of the Same Holy Apostles, Canons of the Apostles is a collection of ancient ecclesiastical decrees concerning the government and discipline of the early Christian Church, first found as last chapter of the Eighth Book of the Apostolic Constitutions, Canon N. 85 of the Ecclesiastical Canons of the Same Holy Apostles is a list of canonical books, includes 46 books of Old Testament canon which essentially corresponds to that of the Septuagint. The Old Testament part of the Canon N. 85 stated as follows Of the Old Covenant, the five books of Moses Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, one of Joshua the son of Nun, one of the Judges, one of Ruth, four of the Kings, two of the Chronicles, two of Ezra, one of Esther, one of Judith, three of the Maccabees, one of Job, one hundred and fifty Psalms, three books of Solomon Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Songs, sixteen prophets. And besides these, take care that your young persons learn the wisdom of the very learned Sirach. Carl Joseph von Heffel argues that, This is probably the least ancient canon in the whole collection. Even he and William Beveridge believe that the writings of the apostolic canons dating from end of the second or early of the third century, though others agree that they could not have been composed before the synods of Antioch of 341 nor even before the latter end of the fourth century. Council of Florence Topic. In the Council of Florence 1442 AD, a list was promulgated of the books of the Bible, including the books of Judith, Esther, Wisdom, Ecclesiasticus, Baruch and two books of the Maccabees as canonical books. Topic. Reformation era Topic. One of the tenets of the Protestant Reformation beginning c. 1517 was that translations of scriptures should be based on the original texts i.e. Biblical Hebrew and Biblical Aramaic for the Old Testament and Biblical Greek for the New Testament rather than upon Jerome's translation into Latin, which at the time was the Bible of the Catholic Church. The Reformers saw the Apocrypha at variance with the rest of Scripture. The Roman Catholic Church uses them to support the doctrine of purgatory, for prayers and masses for the dead, 2 Macc 1243-45, and for the efficacy of good works in attaining salvation, Tobit 12-9, Ecclesiasticus 733, things that Protestants then and today deem to be blatantly contradicting other parts of the Bible. Topic: <laughs> Martin Luther. Topic: Luther did remove the deuterocanonical books from the Old Testament of his translation of the Bible, placing them in the Apocrypha, that are books which are not considered equal to the Holy Scriptures, but are useful and good to read. He also did many other canon related things. Luther argued unsuccessfully for the relocation of Esther from the canon to the Apocrypha, since without the deuterocanonical sections, it never mentions God. Then he said, Does it urge Christ? Yes, because it tells the story of the survival of the people from whom Christ came. As a result, Catholics and Protestants continue to use different canons, which differ in respect to the Old Testament. There is some evidence that the first decision to omit these books entirely from the Bible was made by Protestant laity rather than clergy. Bibles dating from shortly after the Reformation have been found whose tables of contents included the entire Roman Catholic canon, but which did not actually contain the disputed books, leading some historians to think that the workers at the printing presses took it upon themselves to omit them. However, Anglican and Lutheran Bibles usually still contained these books until the 20th century, while Calvinist Bibles did not. Several reasons are proposed for the omission of these books from the canon. One is the support for Catholic doctrines such as purgatory and prayer for the dead found in 2 Maccabees. Luther himself said he was following Jerome's teaching about the Veritas Hebraica. Topic: <coughs> <coughs> Council of Trent. Topic: 
The Council of Trent on April 8, 1546, approved the enforcement of the present Roman Catholic Bible canon including the deuterocanonical books as an article of faith the contents of the canon itself having already been reaffirmed unanimously, and the decision was confirmed by an anathema by vote 24 yea, 15 nay, 16 abstain. The canonical books list is the same as produced following the Council of Florence session 11, 4 February 1442, on 2 June 1927, Pope Pius the 11th decreed that the Comma Johannium of the New Testament was open to dispute. On 3 September 1943, Pope Pius XII reiterated the teaching of the Church in Divino Afflante Spiritu, reaffirming that Catholic translations of the Bible in vernacular languages, based on Aramaic, Greek, and Hebrew texts, had been allowed by the Church since the time of the Council of Trent. <laughs> Church of England The Church of England separated from Rome in 1534, and published its 39 articles in Latin in 1563 and in Elizabethan English in 1571. Article 6 of the 1801 American Revision is titled, Of the Sufficiency of the Holy Scriptures for Salvation. In the name of Holy Scripture we do understand those canonical books of the Old and New Testament, of whose authority was never any doubt in the Church. Of the names and number of the canonical books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, the I Book of Samuel, the II Book of Samuel, the I Book of Kings, the II Book of Kings, the I Book of Chronicles, the II Book of Chronicles, the I Book of Esdras, the II Book of Esdras, the Book of Esther, the Book of Job, the Psalms, the Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, or the Preacher, Cantica, or Songs of Solomon, Four Prophets the Greater, Twelve Prophets the Less and the other books as Hiram the Old English form of Hieronymus, or Jerome. Seth the Church doth read for example of life and instruction of manners, but yet it doth not apply them to establish any doctrine. Such are these following, the three book of Esdras, the IV book of Esdras, the book of Tobias, the book of Judith, the rest of the book of Esther, the book of Wisdom, Jesus the son of Sirach, Baruch the prophet, the song of the three children, the story of Susanna, of Bel and the dragon, the prayer of Manasses, the I book of Maccabees, the two book of Maccabees. All the books of the New Testament, as they are commonly received, we do receive and account them canonical. Books marked were added in 1571. The original King James Bible of 1611 included King James Version Apocrypha which is frequently omitted in modern printings. These texts are, 1 Esdras, 2 Esdras, Tobit, Judith, Rest of Esther, Wisdom, Ecclesiasticus, Baruch and the Epistle of Jeremy, Song of the Three Children, Story of Susanna, The Idol Bell and the Dragon, Prayer of Manasses, 1 Maccabees, 2 Maccabees. The English Civil War broke out in 1642 and lasted till 1649. The Long Parliament of 1644 decreed that only the Hebrew canon would be read in the Church of England, and in 1647 the Westminster Confession of Faith was issued which decreed a 39-book OT and 27-book NT, the others commonly labelled as Apocrypha, were excluded. Today this decree is a Protestant distinctive, a consensus of Protestant churches, not limited to the Church of Scotland, Presbyterianism, and Calvinism, but shared with Baptist and Anabaptist confessions of faith also. With the restoration of the monarchy to Charles II of England 1660 the Church of England was once again governed by the 39 Articles, as printed in the Book of Common Prayer 1662, which explicitly excludes the Apocrypha from the inspired writings as unsuitable for forming doctrine, while ironically conceding them value for education so permitting public reading and study. According to the Apocrypha, Bridge of the Testaments, on the other hand, the Anglican Communion emphatically maintains that the Apocrypha is part of the Bible and is to be read with respect by her members. Two of the hymns used in the American Prayer Book Office of Morning Prayer, the Benedictus S. and Benedicity, are taken from the Apocrypha. One of the offertory sentences in Holy Communion comes from an Apocryphal book, T.O.B., 4-8-9. Lessons from the Apocrypha are regularly appointed to be read in the daily, Sunday, and special services of morning and evening prayer. There are altogether 111 such lessons in the latest revised American Prayer Book Lectionary the books used are, 2 Esdras, Tobit, Wisdom, Ecclesiasticus, Baruch, 3 Holy Children, and I Maccabees. The position of the Church is best summarized in the words of Article 6 of the 39 Articles, In the name of Holy Scripture we do understand those canonical books of the Old and New Testament, of whose authority there was never any doubt in the Church. 
and the other books as Hiram Street. Jerome Seth the church doth read for example of life and instruction of manners, but yet doth it not apply them to establish any doctrine. Topic Eastern Orthodox Canon Topic The Eastern Orthodox receive as their canon the books found in their Septuagintal, Patristic, Byzantine, and liturgical tradition. As of the Synod of Jerusalem, convened in 1672, the Orthodox Church considers as canonical the following, specifically, the Wisdom of Solomon, Judith, Tobit, the History of the Dragon, Bell and the Dragon, the History of Susanna, the Maccabees, and the Wisdom of Sirach, for we judge these also to be with the other genuine books of divine scripture genuine parts of scripture. For ancient custom, or rather the Catholic Church, which has delivered to us as genuine the sacred Gospels and the other books of Scripture, has undoubtedly delivered these also as parts of Scripture, and the denial of these is the rejection of those. And if, perhaps, it seems that not always have all of these been considered on the same level as the others, yet nevertheless these also have been counted and reckoned with the rest of Scripture, both by synods and by many of the most ancient and eminent theologians of the Catholic Church. All of these we also judge to be canonical books, and confess them to be sacred scripture. Not all books of the Old Testament are covered in the Prophetologian, the official Old Testament lectionary, because the only exposure most Eastern Christians had to the Old Testament was from the readings during services. The Prophetologian can be called the Old Testament of the Byzantine Church. Topic references topic topic External links topic The Jewish people and their sacred scriptures in the Christian Bible from the Pontifical Biblical Commission The Old Testament Canon, Scripture and Tradition, Church Fathers. Old Testament, Reading Room, C.A., Tyndale Seminary. Extensive online OT resources INCL, commentaries. Deuterocanonical books, full text from St. Takla Hamanot Church website also available the full text in Arabic. The Apocrypha, Inspired of God.